How's it going everyone? Ben here from Augment Guitars and today we're going to be doing a fret level crown and polish on the eBay Telecaster build. This job can make or break the playability of an instrument, so let's make sure we do it right. So without further ado, let's get into it. Before we tackle the fret level crown and polish, we need to file a 35 degree bevel onto the fret ends. To do this, we will be using this fret bevel jig I purchased many years ago on eBay. The base is made from a hard plastic and it features two files, one for a 35 degree bevel and the other for a 90 degree bevel. I place a piece of tape on the bottom of the jig to reduce friction when it slides back and forth along the fret tops. So let me show you how it works. Slide the file down the fretboard using an even and controlled pressure to cut the bevel. You will know when you are done when the file starts to lightly cut into the edge of the fretboard. After a little bit of work, one side is done. Let's repeat the process for the other side. Both sides are beveled and looking great. We are now ready for the next step, the fret level. The first thing we need to do is make sure the neck is nice and straight before we level the frets. To do this, we will once again be using the notch straight edge. When checking the relief, there should be no gaps or light shining through between the fretboard and the straight edge. As you can see, the neck is dead straight and ready for the fret level. To do the fret level, I like to use a 16 inch Stumac diamond coated leveling beam. Both sides are dead flat, but one is covered with a diamond coating. I like to use the diamond side and some adhesive 220 grit sandpaper on the other side to do the fret level. For a long time, I used this inexpensive T-bar leveling beam and some adhesive 220 grit sandpaper to level the frets. It did a great job, but it was very light and a bit more difficult to control. I like the weight and shape of the Stumac leveling beam better. I also want to get a 24 inch beam here soon for longer scale instruments. So let's start the fret level. To check our progress, I like to use a sharpie to mark the tops of the frets. This will show us which areas we file down and also the areas that haven't been touched yet by the beam. Be careful when marking the frets as we don't want to slip and mark the fretboard. When using the leveling beam, we want to follow the center line of the neck. We want to keep the beam parallel with the center line when going up and down the fretboard and moving closer to both the base and treble sides. It will take a bit of time to get used to at first, but it should start to make sense once you get a feel for it. Even I need a little time to warm up and get a good rhythm going. The diamond coating on this file isn't too aggressive and is a bit worn down from use. If I need to go faster, I usually switch to the 220 or 320 grit adhesive sandpapers on the non-coated side. After a little bit of leveling, you can see we are making some great progress. If you think you are only taking off material from the ends, you might have a slight up bow and might need to adjust the truss rod a bit to straighten out the neck. Inversely, if you feel like you are only taking off material in the middle, you might have a back bow. If you have done fret work before, you may notice that I didn't tape up the fretboard yet. I like to wait to do this until after the level, just in case I need to check the neck straightness with the straight edge at any point during the leveling process. This leveling pattern looks good, so let's continue on. We have most of the neck leveled except for a few of the higher up frets. One technique that I like to do is to introduce fall away at the 14th fret. This helps to slightly improve the action on the higher frets, especially if you like your action really low. I feel that the notes don't choke out as much due to the increased clearance scaling down towards the last fret. This isn't required, but I like to do it on all my builds. We will be using this smaller 6 inch diamond file and a few pieces of painter's tape. Two pieces is all you need for the fall away. So let's mark the tops again and get to leveling. This is pretty much the same process as the full leveling beam, just with a shorter range of motion. 
Go up and down the frets while moving back and forth from the bass and treble sides. And in no time we are fully leveled. The next step is to crown the fret tops with a file to bring them back to a rounded shape. Before we start crowning, let's tape up the fretboard to protect it. We will once again be using painter's tape for this as it offers a nice protective barrier without strongly adhering to the fretboard and neck. It is super easy to remove after the job is finished. We want to tape in between the frets and on the side of the neck. This will ensure everything is covered and protected. Now that the fretboard is fully taped up, let's once again mark the tops of the frets with a sharpie. To crown the frets, you can use an assortment of files. The first file I started with was the Stumac Double Edge Concave File. This is one of my favorite files and it does a great job of filing in a profile. It has two different sides for different fret widths. It cuts fast and clean, but be careful as you can accidentally take too much off the top if you're not careful. The next file, which is my current first choice, is this Stumac Original Z file. This file makes crowning a breeze as it has a diamond coated surface and has a safe profile so you can't accidentally take too much off the top. It is a bit slower than the other two files, but if you're not taking too much off, it's my go-to. The last file is a three corner file that I purchased from Crimson Guitars. These files work great but require some skill and technique to get right. It cuts just as fast as the concave file. For this job, we are going to be using the Z file. Before we fully use the Z file, let me give you a demo of each file. Since the Z file is diamond coated, we don't have to go a certain way for it to cut. The Z file has two different sides with opposite profiles. I like to go back and forth count the strokes, flip sides, and then do the same amount of strokes on the opposite side. This ensures an even cut and profile. For the concave file, it only cuts in one direction on the push stroke. The three corner file has a smooth edge on all of the points which helps protect the fretboard when filing. You use a smooth and controlled rolling motion to file in the profile. With one down, let's move on to the next one. I will be using the Z file for the remainder of these frets. You will know when the fret is fully crowned when the black marker turns into a small fine line at the top. This ensures that the flat tops of the frets turn into a more rounded shape at the top. The rest of the shape will be profiled in when we do the sanding and polishing stages. Crowning is crucial as it can affect the fret intonation. Additionally, if the frets are too flat on the top, it can introduce unnecessary fret buzz. We officially have all the frets crowned, all right. Before we sand and polish the frets up, we need to smooth out the fret ends. To do this, I like to use a combination of two different fret end files. One is this Hosco fret end file that has two cutting sides and a concave side for the top of the fret end. The other is my tried and true Stumac fret end file that I've used for many years. It has a nice safe edge and that prevents you from digging into the fretboard. The Hosco is nice because I can lightly file the fret end top to take off the sharp edge. Let me show you how it's done. With both files, you use light pressure and a twisting motion to take off the sharp edge. 
It takes a little bit of practice, but you will get the hang of it quickly. Be sure not to apply too much downward pressure as we don't want to accidentally cut through the tape and into the fretboard. You will know when you are finished when the sharp edge is gone. You can feel it with your finger. With the concave end of the Hosco file, give it a few passes until the top edge is softened. Don't do it too much as we will also smooth out the edge a bit with sandpaper later. We don't want to round it completely over. Now that all the fret ends are dressed, it's time to polish up the frets to a mirror shine. To do this, we will be using a combination of sandpapers and micromesh abrasives. We will start with 320 grit sandpaper to remove the large scratches left by the files. I like to use these dense foam blocks as a support as they contour nicely to the rounded frets. We will run it up and down the fretboard with each grit. You can also use an old credit card for support as well if you don't have one of these foam blocks. So let's get to it. With a 320 grit sandpaper, our main goal is to remove the scratches made by the fret files. I like to start with the tops of the frets first as they have the most scratches left by the leveling beam. You should be able to see the scratches as they are still coated with the black sharpie marker from before. Sand down until the scratches are gone, but don't go any further. We don't want to mess up our fret leveling job. As you can see, this fret still has scratches, so let's keep going. After finishing the fret tops, let's tackle the fret ends. These foam blocks make polishing jobs a breeze. I got this specific one in the Micromesh kit I purchased from Stumac. Sometimes, it's just easier to do a little hand sanding for the fret ends. Polishing stainless steel frets can be tedious work sometimes, I tell ya. The big scratches are now removed, so let's switch to 400 grit sandpaper. One technique I use for all grits is this back and forth motion with the foam block or the credit card. This sands and polishes the frets in a rounded motion and helps evenly buff up the frets. It also helps bring back that rounded shape to the fret tops. I went ahead and repeated the process up to 2000 grit sandpaper. At this stage, I like to switch to the micro mesh abrasives as they will produce a mirror shine. These sheets last a long time and are my go-to for fret polishing. And in no time, they are buffed up to 12,000 grit. Look at that shine. But we are not done yet. I like to perform a few last steps to make them really shine. I like to use some polishing compound with my Dremel and a small buffing wheel to shine them up even further. I usually use the green compound on stainless steel frets, but I accidentally grabbed the brown compound for this clip. When polishing with the Dremel, use a low speed and keep moving along the fret to reduce heat. We don't want to heat up the glue and cause one of the frets to pop out. I usually start with the tops, then do both sides and then finish with the fret ends last. I repeated the process for all the frets, so let's wipe off the leftover compound and move on to the next step. The last step is to hand buff with some scratch and swirl remover. This helps to get rid of any of the fine scratches. I just apply some to an old towel, buff on, and then buff off. We are finished polishing up the frets and look at these results. Amazing! They are super shiny and will feel great when playing. 
especially on the bends. Since we are done polishing, let's remove the tape, clean up, and apply some oil to the fretboard. This part is always super satisfying for some reason. All of the tape is removed and we are ready to oil the fretboard. Let's do it. To hydrate the fretboard, we will apply a non-hardening oil. I use a variety of products, but I've been using the Stumac lemon oil for a long time. It smells great and is easy to apply and buff off. Oiling the board keeps the wood from drying out, which could lead to cracking and other issues. I just apply it with a paper towel, wait about 20 minutes or so, and then buff off the excess. It really brings back the color of the fretboard too. Here's the final result. This fretboard looks amazing. And that just about wraps up this episode. These frets turned out amazing and I can't wait to play them. I know they're gonna feel great. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like and subscribe to the Augment Guitars YouTube channel. There's more videos coming. In the next episode, we're going to be assembling the guitar and also tackling the wiring. So we're almost done with it. So I'll see you next time. Have a good one.